Hey guys, uh, thanks for joining our dev stream. Who are you? <laughs> hey, Joshua Boyle, otherwise known as Tokyo Punch Out here, and I'm super glad to be at ID, joined by none other than uh, Adam Pyle, um, design. I hope you've joined our other streams and you know me by now. Yeah. So, in case anybody is brand new to this, uh, as you've seen, maybe uh, we do biweekly community streams, but this is the uh, the the place where we can really drop some sweet info, get some really good questions and answers uh, for the devs themselves that are actually boots in the sand, nonstop, drowned in development. Yeah. Quake Champions. And we're trying to do something a little different this time yeah. and bringing some more people on, yeah. which is exciting. I have to get a lot of team members in here and we'll continue to do that in the future, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. this will be really cool for a lot of people. They're like, where's Tim? Where's Adam? Well, we've got Adam and a bunch of other cast of characters that are going to be it's going to be super cool because they're going to actually talk about the individual parts of the game they work on, some of which are actually going to have some reveals for some things that we've sort of talked about and sort of not talked about. So it's going to just be like mic drop after mic drop. Yeah, at least little sneak peeks. Yeah. So, so just to get right into it, um, we just had a patch out last week. It's our big April patch. Or is it two weeks ago? I don't even know. Time is I think it's just relative. been a week now. A week? It's been, uh, yeah, it's been eight days. Yeah. Because I just got my platinum the other day. Oh, nice. On the daily For your rewards. login rewards? Yeah. Yeah, so they, we had a ton of good stuff that came into this patch. And uh, I think by far the biggest thing that everyone sort of was like uh, surprised about was everybody had mixed opinions of the Strog and Peaker situation before they played Strog and Peaker. <laughs> the situation. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, we're actually, I mean, really happy uh, with uh, the response to Strog. Yeah. Um, Going to the update, there was a lot of skepticism, a lot of people worried. You know, you saw comments around the community that were like, oh, this isn't Quake-like, or, right. you know, uh, and they, they, they knew, like, the uh, the origin of it. Like, yeah. we kind of took inspirations from Quake Wars, and yes, that is a very different game, despite it being in the Quake franchise. Right. You know, it wasn't like an arena shooter. Yeah. Um, it was objective-based, large, open-terrain maps, um, you know, even vehicles, and people would cite that. Right. But... Um, you know, one thing we like try to do this game everywhere is is take inspiration from previous Quake games, and it, it didn't just fall with the droning. Like, right. you know, um, a lot of the combat we have, like when you're fighting and get strong, yeah, actually kind of even feels like single player Quake One and Quake Two, where you're like fighting a Scrag or you're fighting like an Icarus, like Hover Pack, or you know, um, and then even in Quake Three, which is where it really initially came from, yeah. was the flight power up. And right, I know it's not right, like a big right, right. part of the game or even uh, like true. most popular or best power up, but like, you know, one of the, the power ups in Quake 3 was flight and you'd, you know, you'd be on, you know, Terminal Heights or something and you'd have, you know, a, one guy kind of flying around, you know, Uriel flying around the map with, with flight. Yeah. And that's a very similar experience here with Strog where, you know, you're shooting at the, the peaker that's flying around. Um, but I think a lot of people learned that it, he felt more like Quake than they were expecting. Yeah. Um, not just the Pika part, but like Strog is a good kind of standalone character. He is. Because I think people are also, they didn't know how his movement or his stack and all that stuff is going to look, but like across the board, all I've heard is Strog is super fun. Like I've even heard people be like, yo, sorry I was like kind of like skeptical about that video like, for the reveal because like I can't stop using him. And they were saying even for Instagib, Pika is like by far the best thing. Because yeah. it's just a killing machine. And it's a it's a <laughs> bit much, but at the same time, like that's what the mode is. The it's boat is a bit much. You yeah. know, it's it's, for fun. it's super fun. Yeah. Just kinda get in there, you know, with friends, uh, you know, shoot everyone up. You know that you're gonna die a lot, but you're also gonna get a lot of kills. Yeah. Um it's really fun playing Peeker, uh, whether you're in insta in the insta jib or not. Yeah. But um yeah, I, you know, it's it definitely, you know, is a little bit over top in the good way. Right. And I hope that people kinda take to it. Yeah, and it seems like you guys have so far, and I'm super, super stoked. Because, again, every champion that gets added, like, the meta changes, I feel like the depth of movement and stacks and everything else, like, all of these things across the board get more interesting and deeper every single time we do a new champion. Yeah, and Strog will do that a bit as you play in different modes, too. Um, I know that there's, like, kind of radically different, like, meta play styles with them. And they, sometimes it's personal preference, but sometimes it kind of comes down what mode you're in. Right. I know that, like, in team deathmatch, um, whether it's 2v2s or 4s, um, or duels, like, you'll probably play more as Strog yeah. and use the ability for, like, those quick strikes with, with the Kamikaze yep. charge. Just to get that. It's almost like a, like a Galena totem that can travel, right? 
<laughs> that's in the idea yeah. that like you have a proximity like there's like a space that like it's still a tactical thing you have to do you have to make the choice you're vulnerable when you do it yeah, yeah. but you know it'll be like you know if you have fewer people on the map or um you know you have like control positioning you know mm -hmm. what you'll do is you'll back up yeah like, behind support and then like send the drone out yeah just to get a shot then you pop back out like for a follow-up like whether it's a rail or or just like press attack um, but if you start to play them in like sacrifice or other future game modes like that are objective based, you'll you'll find that like peekers way more valuable to your team. Oh yeah. And if you spend more time in peeker mode, then like all your teammates can gang up on the enemies that it's spotting. Yeah. Because um, it's almost then, like having wall hacks for your whole team if you're yeah. actually spotting them correctly. So, if you're getting high enough. You know, I see a lot of people like you know pull out peeker and then immediately start firing with them yeah or doing the charge and right. i hope the people over time start to learn to like wait a little bit for that still yeah. do it but like fly around real up high mm. spot some enemies and then start to try to like tag them from above where it's yeah. really hard to hit yeah um and then you can you can rush in at the last minute like watch your timer because you do have them for like 40 seconds sure so, um, anyway looking forward to future play with Strog because he's he's Definitely. been a lot of fun for me and it's been crazy fun to be like on level to level like where am i hiding my body which has been like a whole new meta too of like on Blood Covenant, I'm just gonna give the secret away. Like my favorite place to hide him <laughs> is so you've got uh the jump pad to twenty five armor which would lead to rail. On that staircase uh coming up, you know, there's that midpoint where there's those pots. Yeah. And if you're on top at, as strong, you can easily jump up there. I've been hiding my body there all the time and people are just circling around like nobody sees that I'm there. You're so gonna I'm like, regret saying that <laughs> probably. But... I just gave there's, it away. Gave there's it a lot you. of spots on every map that were built a long time ago. Yeah. For like Strog, um, and people will find them or have already found them, and yeah. I think that's great. Like people are always wondering, like, well, why is there a little nook here? Or why can't I stand on top of this way up there? And a lot of that is to provide Strog more places, and it's never like one place is the good spot. But, yeah. Like you can like through the match like cycle around where you're hiding. Of course. And uh, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, totally. So the other biggest thing that a lot of people have been saying, and it's been awesome because I felt it myself, is people are like why is this so smooth in this patch? Because there's a lot of things that, like, we didn't necessarily call it in the patch notes, but I was hoping we could get some some more clarification on, like, why is this game so smooth right now? Well, like, I, what I think that your community stream did a pretty good job of explaining that a lot of times that doesn't go in patch notes because it's a yeah. lot of uh, little things that goes over the course of development forever. Like, we're always trying to optimize. But um, one thing in particular that I think helped this time around was that we did the optimization on the weapon effects. Yeah. And oh, that's a good point. It, yeah, yeah. it not just cleaned up visually, but you know, the more you reduce effects, then you're going to reduce any sort of uh, delays that might come around from too many effects being on the screen at once. Oh, I gotcha. And so that improved performance a lot. So it's like, like you're like basically lowering, you're like decreasing the pipeline, so the engine actually has like more space. Yeah, yeah. So because you're like reducing the effects down. I, I think that that's that cool. that was one of the primary. I mean, I don't know if it's the primary thing, but that definitely made a big difference this time. And the whole play experience just feels smoother. Um, it, I think that's one reason why it's really kind of resonating with people in addition to you know the new content. Yeah. yeah. And of course, we're always doing, as we said before, there's always netcode improvements. But again, it's like to get into the minutia of what that is in patch notes sometimes just feels a little bit like, OK, if we're, we're not talking specifically to like network engineers only. So just know that that's always the thing that every single time we're improving. Yeah, definitely. Um, speaking uh, of which, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, so one change we had this uh, April update was that we have now have more data centers selected by default. And we still, um, right now you can still go and, and change them yourself, but one problem we had was that we were, one, leaving it up to the, the user to select data centers that, like the first time they logged in, which yeah. wasn't a very good experience. And it also wasn't very clear that they could select multiple. Right. And so we had a large population of new players that had selected one data center and thought that's all they needed to do. Right. And that was uh, negatively affecting their queue times, um, everybody's queue times. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we are selecting more by default. We still will always, like, put you on the best, lowest ping server we can right. that's available. But it will go through the list, and if, you know, that location is full or there aren't enough people in the queue yeah. for that location, then it will then start to check other locations. Right. Um, that has dramatically improved queue times. Yeah, where gone down a lot, right? If anyone noticed, yeah, like, you know, uh, there could still be long queue times sometimes, but yeah. it used to be that you were always waiting you know, two minutes plus, yeah. it was impossible to get a match in the first 30 seconds. Right. And what people experienced on the first week um, was they were seeing queue times that were under 20 seconds, under 30 seconds, yeah. um, really come to get your match before a minute. 
and um, we have a lot of you know charts that were falling on that, and it was it was really dramatic improvement. So nice. we're happy with that, um, and we are as we move forward, we're going to continue to test different things that will potentially improve your queue times, because we know that is one of the most important things is to get people in matches quickly. And I know that right now people, you know, don't want to be waiting at the menu, right? Um, don't want to be having a lot of UI time. So yeah. we're trying to reduce that. Nice. Yeah. And speaking of which, the other big thing that we kind of touched on in the community streams, but I really was hoping that we could like tackle it here because you are the czar, as I like to think of, of balance across this game. So can you talk a little bit about just some of the changes that we've been making? Um, yeah. Kind of like where you're thinking and where it's going. So on a um, on a high level, I guess there's two different topics to talk about. One would be um, trying to elevate champions that aren't either successful or being picked often. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> that has turned out really well. So yeah. like one example would be uh, throughout the fall, um, Visor was just a kind of a mediocre pick. Yeah. And we made efforts over the course of December through, uh, say, January, and some stuff that made it into the March update, to elevate him a bit. Yeah. Um, and then likewise, from about December and on, we started focusing on uh, BJ, Keel, and Galena. Yeah. And if you were around at the time, those were lower pick champions. They were considered like tier three. Yeah, definitely. And... We, uh, as we've talked about before, there's still going to be champions that are kind of like the top, cream of the crop. Um, but what we want to do is rather than making them all 100% balanced or making them where um, we nerf the top, yeah, we try to elevate the bottom to bring them closer together. So we made like you know it. some changes there, and yeah. we're definitely seeing that. Like right now, you know, Glena is is being picked often. Oh, uh, yeah. She's going to have some future changes too. I'll talk about later. Um, you know, BJ started to get picked up with this update. Yep. I didn't think it would be quite enough yet, but um, I like to see that he's, he's in the gameplay. And, um, you know, Keel, I think people are, if it wasn't from the changes, are now discovering, you know, how, how good he is, he is, how powerful he is. Yeah. Um, I think he was isolated more to, like, a few maps, and yeah. now he's starting to get picked more. Yeah, I've seen him um, a lot more on 2v2 in particular. Yeah. He's an awesome teammate, because every time you're going up against him, you're like, I got this. He's dead, and then it's like another rail, and yeah. you're like, "God, it's so close!" This guy's tank is just like his stack is. If he actually is doing his job and getting a little bit more than he starts with, he's he's a beast. Yeah, no, that's exactly <laughs> what I was gonna say. Is he's a beast. Yeah, he's hard. Um, he's hard to take down. And then the other uh, part of that, the second thing was um, similar to how we wanted to kind of bring all the champions a little bit closer together as yeah. far as like performance. We wanted to do that with a lot of their stats to try to. Um, Equalize things. So right. we like to, um, we're trying to do like a little bit of a unification where uh, everybody has movement that's a little bit closer to each other, yeah. stacks a little bit closer to each other. And so one thing that we did uh, in December is we, you know, we added health people. Mm -hmm. And then in the beginning of this year, what we did is we redid the uh, this movement speeds. Yeah. And like the base, especially. Yeah. Like a lot of people, you know, um, gave feedback about that movement that it was too slow. Mm -hmm. But the big win for us was that that was a whole rebalance for us yeah. to bring everybody where they're like the same starting speed, basically the same top end because we uncap people. Yeah. And then rebalance them there. Right. And then leading into April, we were able to identify like where we still needed to have caps or where we need to control some of the special characters, I'd say, that have like different movements. Yeah. Just so that they, um, you know, didn't dominate over our like vanilla Quick Three champions. Right. And so you didn't have slash and anarchy is basically just like gone in sixty yeah, yeah. seconds every single time. So we we'd like to continue that moving forward. Yeah. Where we have you know we have a lot of testing to do, so right. I'm not going to commit to anything, but we like the idea of making the stacks closer together and more yep. uniform. And if it's not like all the champions having the same stack, mm -hmm. it'd more be like all the lights having the same stack, all the mediums having the same, all the heavies having the same. I like that. Yeah. And those values being closer together, a little bit easier to understand, and w one explanation for Which will make doing that besides cuts, like just yeah. making it easier to balance, right. is that um, it's a little bit easier to understand. It makes the abilities shine a little more. Yeah. One idea we had real early that. on was that like we have all these different knobs that we can tweak to balance people, and that was mm. that's really useful. Yeah. Um, but the more differences people have through movement and stack the less the ability kind of matters because That's there's true. different differentials. Right. And then if everything's kind of close together the same, then now the thing that really is defining that's different from them is the ability. Right. 
Uh, we're not going to change the build as much, but yeah. we just want to make that be the difference that makes as much sense. as possible. Yeah. So we we're going to kind of that's our direction moving forward, and that's going to make team comps I think infinitely more interesting in the sense that like they're already great now, but you know like like you were saying it's like people gravitate so there's always going to be a top tier. Yeah. No matter what for different modes and stuff, but I feel like the more the closer together that is for at least classes of like you know like light versus heavies and stuff, I feel like the team comps are going to get super interesting where their abilities are like maybe that difference maker where it's like if it's if it's like a 50-50 match, it's like how how that other team versus your team and vice versa are actually using your abilities in conjunction with one another to actually like have an advantage. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I feel like there are definite combos that are like match made in heaven. Sort of. I things. definitely don't want to make it be like ever dictate the, the match where like that's why they they won type of thing oh, but of course yeah but having the different like strategies of different compositions is always really fun and i yeah. we see that a lot of 2v2 right now like yeah. who they can pick and what map and what are they going for i, I like right. that yeah um i'm gonna try to move on quickly because we have a lot to cover today but yep. uh a couple of notes on the existing movement um like we know that uh like anarchy is a little weak yeah but this update was trying to resolve uh bugs we had with tuning his circle strafe friction, which controlled like how fast he could gain speed. Yeah. And so that was, again, the big win of the update is that um, we now are in a position that we're, we're happy with how, what, we're happy with our tool set right. to that balance we can him. tweak him. So okay. yeah, so I think that next month, like we're not gonna go back to the days of seeing like Anarchy dominating everybody, yeah. but he'll actually be playable, have a good role, nice. his movement will feel good. Yeah. Um, and right now where you say he's a little weak, that's going back to what I'm talking about with our stack balancing of like, well, maybe all the lights have a certain baseline, right. and that will raise him up and make him more viable. I got you. Um, so, uh, I, I think that the combination of where we're going with the future with where we are in April is looking really good. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, I think we uh, we might be doing a little switch out uh, personnel, and we might be just showing you guys maybe the world premiere of what we're working on with Gore System here for the first time ever. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we might be. We're getting some headshots. We might not be. Um, I'm pretty sure we will be at some point. Yes, at but, some point we will be. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to, um, so we're going to touch base a little bit on our on our coming features mm -hmm. for our next update. Yeah. Um, we have uh, Gore development. Yeah. And we've been playtesting with it. Um, it still uh, has work to do. Mm -hmm. um, but we're but it rules. Yeah, it's great. Like I, I love the moments of, uh, you know. Getting a kill right in front of you and seeing like a torso flop and you know it's it's uh, so ra like it's it's weird because this whole time I've been playing and just enjoying the hell out of Quake Champions, which is basically all I ever play now. It's I I, I haven't even been thinking about like all of the gore that we're missing. You but then play all other of a sudden, games? <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? No. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's the funny thing too is yeah we play all kinds of games. I yeah. mean, I'm not going to mention them by name because it's not necessary. But yeah, there's stuff that comes out and we're like, well, we have to play that to see what they're doing in that. So um, on, on the upcoming update, I just want to roll up this because we've really got to. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so there's some great features coming. Uh, we'll have them on PTS pretty soon. Don't have a date yet. But in there we have uh, teammate health bars. Right. So that you oh, can really cool. yeah. you know, know when your teammate's weak. You can go help them out. Right. Um, we have. And maybe you can be less selfish when you're about to grab something. Like Absolutely. I know. You see they're about to grab. Like you, you're, you're, like you're seconds away from getting mega and you see your teammate coming up and you're like, well. That teammate needs. I it. would love if more people play that way. Uh, I do all the time. Like I'll go yeah. up to a, an item and stop and like kind of shoot it and like, hey, do you need that? Just check. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't, but this will allow you to know like if they're low on health or armor. Yeah. Um, and so maybe they'll they'll pull you know kind of push that gameplay. But mm -hmm. other things like even when your teammate's like off in the map. Yeah. Further away, if you see them like coming weak in the uh, distance, like through the X-ray, you then know you maybe. know that they are be in a firefight right. for one. True. So you could go assist them, um, or you know that's a dangerous place and it helps you kind of get some information about yeah. the enemies so that's, really that's nice, nice. Yeah. Um, we also have a death cam coming at least for our uh, like unright yes. play and uh, that has been really fun yeah. um, it lets you, it doesn't do like a, a kill cam yeah. but what it does is it, it lets you know like where the attack came from um, shows you who was killing you and like how much health they had left that's the thing that's the most important thing yeah. like actually cuz a lot of times like we were talking about with keel it's like I know that keel is super low, and but you're always like guessing. You're like, is it like five health? Is it twenty five? Like, how big was the stack? You actually get that information now. Yeah, it's, or you're going to. It's like it's the one be. thing that always happens when you play with friends. Yeah. Like you know you, <laughs> you you think that you have them. Yeah. And then you die, and then you're like calling out like, what? How like, much health did what, you have? What's left? your like, HP? You had to be low. Yeah. Um, he's so one. He's one. He's one. It kind of gives that out, and that's <laughs> that's definitely fun. Yeah. Um, 
But I know the, the exciting thing that we brought up was, was gore. We don't want to like roll into that. Yeah. Um, I'd like to, uh, in a second, just we're going to pull on Sheen, mm -hmm. um, who is our animation lead, and he's going to talk a little bit about uh, like gore and where the development came from and where we're going. Super hyped. Maybe a little preview. Yep. Welcome back. Uh, I'd like to introduce Sheen. Sheen, want to hey. go ahead and uh, introduce yourself a little bit more to the uh, audience and let them know who you are and what you've done and uh, what we're doing with the core. All right. So uh, I'm Sheen. Uh, I've been working for it for more than 10 years now. Uh, I started uh, working here uh, with Tim Willits uh, on Rage, uh, worked on Doom, uh, did you know a bunch of gory stuff on that one. Yeah, I remember when you uh, came on board, like. You were like one of the experts in like facial and hand animation. Right. We we were just starstruck when we got you. Actually. Cool. Yeah, but that could turn into more of a gory, bloody stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then uh, now I'm on uh, Quake, uh, kind of getting that it it flavor to this particular product. Yeah. So <clears throat> on Doom, gore became one of the like core features that branded the game a bit, where people mm -hmm. like identify gore with Doom. Uh, so. When we started talking about gore with Quake, we started talking first about Doom and what you'd done on Doom and why it worked for that game and also why it wouldn't necessarily work for our game. Right. <clears throat> yeah, so for Doom, it's, it's a, a, a sync system. So basically, when you initiate glory kill, you're locked for about half, you know, one and a half seconds or so. Uh, so it's, in a way, it's kind of like a throw moving uh, of fighting games. Right? Yeah. Like so you, it, it, you commit, you you get rewarded by delivering uh, damage or even death to the the, the enemy, and then uh, you get the sequel animations. But for Quake, it's because it's such a fluid, you know, uh, a skill based shooter thing, we couldn't really do like stop the player and lock them in place. So we need to do some different way of actually making it so that it's it's uh, uh, it's not it, it doesn't interrupt the gameplay. Yeah. So um, you know, with Doom. You know, there's a lot of melee, and of course, in our game, everything needs to be at a distance, mm -hmm. and so we, you know, we can't stop the player, um, you know, for multiple reasons, and so we really wanted to find out how we keep the spirit of Quake, um, but like celebrate those moments more. Right. So we talked a lot about, you know, how how do we make certain moments special more than others? One thing that um, I think stood out to me about the Quake Three jibs was that. They, they're always the same, and uh, you know you could kind of generate the same effect from any weapon. And so they were great and elaborate, but they also weren't uh, entirely special from one moment to another. So one thing we wanted to do with Quake was really make it where we could identify how someone died by looking at the gore death. Mm -hmm. And so that you got different experiences from different weapons. Um, can you talk a little bit about how we like sorted through that and, and came across like our condition system. Yeah, so like the, we, I mean, yeah, obviously we can make this cool, uh, you know, death animations or gore stuff. Uh, but the thing is, if it happens all the time, or well, it just happens randomly, it, it just kind of becomes just a norm. So we wanted to come up with a system that, that is uh, uh, basically uh, contextual in the way that you, you have to qualify conditions to actually trigger them. So, for instance, like the uh, uh, shotgun, you know, like uh, in, in, uh, if you actually kill the enemy point blank, meaning you're very close to the enemy and blast them, uh, that might rip, me, rip them in half. Yeah. You know, or a, uh, uh, the machine gun, if you actually shoot them, uh, like it's a damage per second thing, that if you actually uh, shoot them like continuously for a certain amount of time, uh, they blow up, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so, we have a, a very specific kind of rule set 
that uh, trigger specific death animations. Uh, but also those are actually location based. So if you you know hit the head, they'll blow up and uh, goes away, or you can rip the arm off. So it's uh, actually very uh, uh, interactive in a way. Uh, but also it's uh, uh, it feels uh, more natural than just like seeing these like random death animations. Yeah, yeah. So you know you can. <clears throat> take off an arm you mm -hmm. can like cut someone across the chest right we have a whole bunch of different places where you know we've chopped up <clears throat> all these bodies um to have you know kind of radically different yeah. results based off of what weapon you use and yeah, where you I hit think, them i think that's definitely like something we do very different from others actually because most of games out there they basically swap the character and then just gives this like random jib pieces mm -hmm. as for our particular game what you guys going to see eventually is that the uh, actual body comes apart so you know, like it's it's not like the, you were swapping the mesh and then becomes this like random goo. Yeah, you can actually get to see like a character split in half and it's that particular character and it's it's quite challenging actually you think about it for games like this because we have so many different skins, you yeah. know. But we don't have any like edge case like, oh, the lower skin of uh, <laughs> this character can't gore or jib. Uh, there's none of that. Actually, I think that's one of the... Uh impressive things to me about this whole feat of what you've done with the gores because it's it's not just taking here's ranger this is what he looks like when he's chopped in half but no matter what armor outfits you're right. wearing for your helmet your chest and mm -hmm. your legs like you can cut across that and you have the correct pieces on the yeah. jibs yeah and i think that the uh, the seamless uh, look of that presentation really pays off like it feels very solid and the player feedback is really night and day you know, versus actually uh, breaking the actual that particular character apart versus just changing it to different random goo pieces. Nice. Um, and and then, uh, of course, the pieces that come off, they all have, like, ragdoll physics, so they're bounced mm -hmm. around. It's not just, like, canned animations. No. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a hybrid. Yeah. Like, we wanted to still craft the actual presentation as well. But as soon as it hits the uh, uh, you know other players or the uh, collision or walls or whatever, uh, it goes into physics. So it's still dynamic. Uh, yeah, I, I like it this way. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think that we're <laughs> okay. Got a little message from outside. Um, but I think we're going to move forward and give a little sneak peek. We yeah, have a, let's do it. We have a video to roll. Um, it's still. Um, early and this is just kind of a dev video it's not a big production uh it's a few weeks old now at this point um so we still have to make improvements but we wanted to kind of let you have a little insight into development as we keep going with gore right roll it
My God. Like, can we just take a a quick second here and just say, my God, like, I thought I was having fun this whole time in the game, and I was like, yeah, Quake Champions is my favorite game I played every day. It's got all the gore I need in it. And then you see this, and you're like, well, it's just about to just, it's just going to keep stepping up. It's just going to, like, be quad blood and gore and guts every single time you play it now. It's super rad. Yeah. It's super rad. Especially with, like, gun specific, it's, like, blowing my mind. Like, yep. we've never had that. Usually it was just like, okay, you shot him with a rocket launcher. You see the giblets, uh, you know, spray down, and that was basically it. It's, it's really satisfying when you get that, you know, super far away hit or whatever, a rocket in the air, and you see it explode. It's great. Yeah. But I would like to introduce the world here to uh, David Saunders, who is our monetization designer. Hi. Uh, so here at it, I do a lot of different things uh, related to uh, metagame systems. So, you know, everything about the game that is not shooting or champions or anything like that. Um, so as you know, recently we, uh, we put together like daily rewards and things yep. like that. Um, Which has been awesome. Yeah, we're doing a lot of, a lot of cool things. So one thing, so we launched to Early Access back in August yep. of last year. Um, and really the game hasn't changed a whole lot in terms of its overall structure and, and meta system since then. Um, and one thing you guys are going to be seeing a lot from us recently or, or soon is a lot of changes. Uh, a lot of things you guys have been asking for, a lot of things that we've been wanting to do for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, it's pretty pretty exciting. So one Praise of the, the sun. <laughs> Praise the sun. Praise the sun. <laughs> uh, yeah, so one of the things that we have been working toward uh, is uh, new ways to acquire champions. So right now in the game, you can get champions, you can buy them, you can buy the champions pack. Um, yeah. But you can also get them from, uh, from chests and reliquaries. Um, and, uh, you know, this is fine, but if you already own the Champions Park or own the Champion, it's really not that exciting for you. Right. Um, additionally, there's it's not really a very clear path for free players to get there. Yeah. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be allowing you to use your favor to get those Champions. Nice. Um, so you'll see that. To in, acquire them, like, permanently, not just the rental thing? To acquire permanently, yes. Okay, cool. Yes, yes. So also right now you can rent them for, for some favor. Um, that is going away, but okay. we are going to in instead introduce... Kind of a traditional uh, free champion of the week. Nice. So every single week you'll get a new champion. You won't have to spend any money to rent them. They'll just be in your inventory. You can use them however much you want. You'll save all your progress on them, just like you own them. That's um, awesome. So you'll start, like a free-to-play player will come in and start with yep. Ranger. And then week by week, they can basically, for that whole week, also get an additional character. That's right. Sweet. And we'll have some other ways to get champions, uh, which we'll talk about in the future, not today. But... Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Um, one of the that. other things I want to talk to you guys about is uh, is leveling and XP. So basically, it's it's been mostly the same as when we launched in August. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't really changed it. Um, it's what I considered temporary at the time, and we're, we're going to be changing that. So nice. um, you're obviously still going to get the same amount of XP as you, you do now. You're going to keep your level, but leveling is going to be a ton faster. A oh, lot, cool. lot, lot faster. Very nice. Um, so that also means you're going to get a lot more uh, loot boxes from leveling up, both chests and reliquaries. Um, eventually, we'll probably add some other things to that leveling curve, but not anytime real, real soon. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys should see that relatively soon. Sweet. Because I know that's one of the things that like we'd play a game and we'd be like, you'd be like XP and you'd be like, plus that green, we got double, yeah. and it's like... Yeah, I want that to be more though. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. well that game. <laughs> so when when we do events, it's yeah. we want it to actually like be cool and mean something, you yeah, know, totally. um, and be meaningful. Yeah, uh, I always like in games when I go in and I say, okay, like today I'm gonna get my first win of the day or whatever it is. Yeah, and I know that I'm working towards something, and I can, you know, by the end of the week or in a couple of days, I've I've gained a level, and that's that's great. Dude, already just having like the daily rewards every time I log in, it's just like, I mean, I'm gonna log in anyway, but having those carrots where you're like. Like having a lore scroll in there is actually really sweet. Yeah. Because again, right now it's randomly assigned at the end of the game, which you see because of the you battle. You see report, now, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're always getting them before, but we didn't really tell you about it. But yeah. At least you see it now. Yeah, it's cool. Um, and so, because some people are just grinding there, like I need that lore skin, like I need the yes. full thing so I can get that final like epic set. So. Yeah, yeah, and I, I touched on it a little bit earlier. Uh, one of the things you'll be seeing the rest of this year and forever mm -hmm. is a lot more changes, a lot more quickly. Yeah. Uh, We've, we've really been spending a lot of time building our technology to make sure we're able to do that. Without new builds, you're not going to have to wait for our new update to get a lot of these things, to run cool events, to do to do all these things. So that would be really good. That's awesome. 
Um, last thing I want to touch on is we uh, are changing the way that we do our loot boxes. Yeah. So I know you guys have been very unhappy with all the duplicates you're getting and stuff like that. Uh, we've rewritten the system basically from the ground up. Nice. You'll get a lot less duplicates. You'll also be getting a lot more from leveling up. You'll be getting a lot more from doing other things. We want to give you guys a lot more of that stuff. Cool. Um, and also right now, there's three different loot boxes. You know, there's the there's the backpacks, which are favor, mm -hmm. um, chest and reliquaries, which are platinum. You also get them for leveling up and other, other things like that. Yeah. And they all contain different items. So right now, the, uh, the chest contains a higher chance at things like like weapons and vanity items yeah. and champions. Uh, we're going to be making all three of those a bit more even cool. along the board so that when you say, hey, I want this specific item and this specific weapon, you don't really have to worry too much about you making a wrong choice about going after that. Oh, nice. So it won't be like, because right now I think it was kind of like like for, if you wanted like a player icon or a plate, like there was kind of a higher chance maybe of those being in like a backpack versus like a reliquary, because a reliquary had like the higher end stuff. You're going to kind of unify that as far as... A bit more, yeah. Cool. I mean, when you buy a reliquary or get one, we don't want to just give you a bunch of nameplates or some, something like that. So yeah. there will be some differences. Nice. Um, but we'll communicate that to you, uh, kind of however it ends up. And if we want to change it, we don't like it, we'll change it. And you cool. know, we'll work with you guys to make sure it's fun. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, one question that uh, we've already had pop up a lot since people saw Gore is, is Gore going to be monetized? Uh, it's kind of a joke, but it's also kind of not a joke. So we're not charging <laughs> anything for, uh, for, for Gore. You're gonna, Gore is free. Everyone gets it. One thing we have talked about <laughs> is doing special weapons that do, do certain things that I'd love to do. Um, I want to shoot a guy with a lightning gun and have him turn into a skeleton. Can we make that happen? Okay. Uh, that's a confirmation. <laughs> that, that's a possibility. That's a high possibility. Uh, you know, that's that's not going to come with our release of gore. We yeah. still would, would have to make it. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, we do want, eventually, to have uh, weapons be of varying higher quality and things like that. So... One of our most popular items is, of course, like the Quake 1 rocket launcher, which I love. Yeah. Um, you know, it's centered. It works differently from the other ones. We want to do more of that and more of that. So the idea would maybe be like vanity gore specific weapons. Like if you use the Quake 1 rocket launcher, maybe you get like a Quake 1 specific gib that you're like, hmm, it's exactly what I wanted. When I play this, I get all of the nostalgia. I get all the feels. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, cool. that's our long-term plan with these things. Yeah. Um, but for, for now... Enjoy the gore. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to start charging for it or anything <laughs> like that. No. And then uh, the other thing a lot of community members were talking about, and you already kind of touched on this yeah. with the idea of, um, of chess, but, um, you know, why all the duplicates? And what can I do with all these shards now that a lot of people who have been in for, especially since, like, CBT, yeah. it's like, you know, you, you end up collecting a lot. Because, of course, there's only so many items, and we're getting all these packs, and we're opening all this stuff, and we're like, crap, now I have all these shards. Yeah, and you'll actually get a lot more shards because we'll be giving you a lot more boxes and things like that. Right. Um, but also, hopefully you should be getting a lot less shards with the new, or not a lot less duplicates at least, with the new uh, uh, drop systems. Nice. Um, but we will be, ch so right now... I'm just pointing at oh. the people. We're getting those items. We're just, I don't know, I'll be pointing every now and then, just recognizing that they're there. <laughs> uh, okay, so right now the, you can buy the, the Reliquary and the chest, they're both for Platinum. Uh, you know, one gives you three items, one gives you two items. There's, yeah. It's not... You feel like you're making a bad choice one or the other, I think, personally. So what we're going to do is the chest, right now it's for platinum. Yeah. We're going to change that. No more, no longer for platinum, it's going to be for shards only. So oh, anyone nice. who has a bunch of extra shards and you want to get some uh, character shaders, weapon shaders, or whatever else we throw in there, uh, you can use it for that. That's awesome. That's very cool. So I think we've got... Another uh, special guest we're going to bring in here in a second, but I just wanted to say thanks for hanging out. It's been awesome to finally introduce you to the world, that uh, and just let everybody know that you know we're we're always listening and we're changing all of this stuff to make it as cool as possible and make all the leveling and make all the you know opening of of chests and boxes and and uh, and backpacks as cool as possible. We are very aware of what you like and what you don't like, so yeah, you know, just let us know and you know. We'll, we're listening and we'll change it yeah. if we don't like it. Yeah. So cool. Thanks. Awesome.
everybody. Welcome back. Join with me now. I'm super excited to introduce the world to John Dean, our technical director here at IT. Hi. How's it going, everybody? So what we're going to talk about is something I'm really hyped to talk about because it's something we've been, we've sort of talked about a little bit in the very, very uh, long ago past, and we've sort of touched on it in, in one community stream. Uh, Andre might have mentioned it, but we're finally talking about it today. Yep. What are we talking about? Bots for Quake Champions. <laughs> I can already, I can feel the stream chat's excitement of just blowing up and being super hyped. So, okay, bots and Quake Champions. What exactly does that mean for this game? So, uh, obviously, it for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. It's it's really nice to have bots in the game. It's been a feature request that's been on the docket for a really long time. And for good reason, good cause. Uh, they're really fun to play with. It's nice to be able to play, you know, kind of more low key games, a little less stress with, with like friends and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, now, Quake is a very fast paced action game, so yeah. there's also uh, sort of a training aspect to them that, that's really useful where you can get into the game and kind of get trained up. Um, the system that uh, I'm working on right now is gonna be able to function pretty much transparently as a player. I mean, you're really not gonna be able to tell the difference. Yeah. They're gonna be able to do trick jumps, they're gonna be able to strafe jump around, um, they'll, they'll do all the things that you expect to do, they'll play the game modes, they'll use all the weapons. Nice. Uh, but then the really nice thing is as well is that their their skill level is kind of a sliding scale. Oh, so cool. if you go down to like the easy level, you know, they're not gonna be jumping around, they're gonna be more just kind of running around, staying on the ground, they yeah. won't be doing trick jumps. They, okay. uh, they actually will go out of their way to avoid some of the more powerful items in the map, yeah. like uh, you know, mega health, heavy armor, and of course the power-ups. Right, so, so for lower skilled players who are maybe for the first time seeing or locating those things, it kind of helps them acclimate with where these things are, right? Abs absolutely, and yeah. it gives you that chance to, to get familiar with those items and, and use them and, and kind of feel just how powerful you can become with them. Nice. Now, as you slide up the scale, uh, they'll they'll start trying to contest for those items, particularly yeah. for the enemy team if you're playing like a team game. Yeah. But they'll still under the hood they're they're looking at their teammates and but in particular their human teammates. Okay. And they they'll defer to them. So like if he's running and oh, going nice. to get like a qu the quad or something, and you're running for it as well, he'll he'll defer and kind of actually just kind of hang out for a sec, let oh, you grab cool. it so that you have the opportunity to get that quad and, and then use it on the enemy team. Sounds so. like the best teammates ever. <laughs> yeah, actually, you guys were talking earlier uh, about, about you know, Adam made a point about how, you know, teammates stealing stuff. And yeah. They are actually built from the ground up to not do that. Oh they try God. to be the best teammates. Can I hire, like, three teammates? Or can I just hire one and we'll go to DreamHack Tours, like, in a couple of weeks here? It sounds it sounds amazing. Yeah, so I think people are really going to like that. Um, you know, for phase one, because yeah. um, this is going to be continued development for for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, for phase one, we're going to support, you know, the basic game modes, deathmatch, uh, team deathmatch, and of course, InstaJib, because we love that here. Yeah. Um, phase two, uh, the, sorry, real quick, for phase one, they will play all the champions, oh, cool. um, use all the weapons. Nice. They won't use the abilities, though, for phase one. Right. For phase two, they will start using the abilities for the champions. We'll start rolling cool. in more and more champion support. And we'll also have uh, support for more of the game modes. Oh, awesome. So, so game modes like Sacrifice and anything else that comes down uh, now or in the future will also be supported, completely supported. And also for any new champions that we ever roll out, they'll also Very have cool. complete and full support when, when the champion rolls out there. Man, this is hype. And just so to back up for two seconds here, um, for a lot of people who might not know, this is not your first, uh, you know, go at doing bots in, a, in an id software title, is it? No, actually, so, uh, Pretty much since Quake One, I've yeah. been I've been making mods. I mean, I fell in love with Quake. It was it was the most amazing game I'd ever seen in my life, and it really is what got me on the road to this industry. That's awesome. So, and one of the first mods that I did was like an AI mod with the monsters, making them a little tougher and then reaction times faster. And then I kind of went like, well, it's kind of cool playing with the monsters, but you know, I really wish I could play with people. And at the time, I had like a terrible internet connection, so there was no <laughs> way I was going to be able to play with anyone else. So. Yeah. I just started working on bots. I'm like, okay, nice. well, I'll, I'll run around and then play with bots and, and like the deathmatch maps, and it just kind of evolved from there. Pretty much every Quake game, I made some kind of mod, or whether it was for like the different clans I was a part of, or or just for kind of my own personal use, or, or yeah. giving them out to friends at university. 
and then that kind of rolled into me really upping it for uh, Return to Castle Wolfenstein multiplayer. Oh, nice. And Wolf Enemy Territory, which were uh, Quake 3 based engines. Yeah. And that really kind of hit the next uh, level. Yeah. And that's actually what got me the notice of uh, Robert Duffy here at uh, It Software. He, oh, he, very he, cool. He played him and he was like, holy shit, this is pretty amazing. So he, I just get an email out <laughs> one day like, Hey, uh, you want to make some stuff for us? Oh my God, it's like, like dream come true scenario. You bet. You're like, I'm just having fun. Like, yeah, I yeah. guess I'll get paid to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh yeah, you want to pay me? Sure, you know. <laughs> so That's I got awesome. down here lickety split, and then, yeah. uh, you know, started off. They wanted me to do bots for Quick Wars, which yeah. which we did, and which should. is actually it's pretty elaborate because there was a lot more players in that too, right? A lot more players, and you're you're and you're also looking at like a square mile map. So and then you got vehicles, vehicles, on, yeah. There's a lot land more land scenery vehicles, yeah. Huge maps, asymmetrical teams. So the right. so uh, each team had their own abilities and weapons and everything else like that. So it was a pretty complicated problem, yeah. but uh, but yeah, we got it done and it was a That's lot awesome. of fun. People really enjoyed it. And most recently, I super enjoyed your work in uh, in Doom 2016. You did yeah. all the multiplayer bots. Yes. So in Doom, I I kind of floated back and forth between a couple places where they needed me. Uh, yeah. The bots were one of the things. And uh, of course, I also did Snap Map. I uh, was lead programmer on Snap Map as well. But, but yeah, we had the bots in there. So that was it's a lot amazing. of fun. I'm going to shake your hand right now. That's a lot of <laughs> damn good work. I mean, everybody here too, but I yeah, had no, a ton absolutely. of fun with Snap Map and with the bots in particular. Yep. Because that's one of those things too where like at some point when you would reach like a threshold of, okay, like in public matches, like I know exactly how well I'm going to do and I don't want to like mess up that... Uh, I'm not trying to discourage anyone to play the game. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm trying to leave like the the public matches alone. So I would just start playing insanity level bots and just try, if I could do 50, you know, that was like my goal every time. Oh yeah. Which I think I only got twice. It was hard. Yeah. But damn, those are good bots. Yeah. Well, on the <laughs> other side of it too, uh, uh, a buddy in, of mine, we'd always play with them like on super easy and yeah. then just like run around and just decimate them. So we'd, yeah. we'd stay up like all night to like three in the morning, <laughs> just running around chasing them down yeah. like super low skill bots and. And shooting them and everything. It was just a lot of fun. Just a stupid way to have a lot of fun. And then so. you can like test that everything, like weapons you wouldn't normally use, or maybe like Absolutely. power up combinations of how long can I make this go. Yeah, and we do like tactics and, and training each other and doing like all kinds of like squad stuff in there, taking the rooms and stuff. Yeah, like that. it was a lot of fun. So. That's awesome. Very cool. And so uh, some questions we've seen on stream so far. Uh, one question that there's a couple of people who have been crazy adamant and I appreciate your passion it's a little nuts like how much this comes up on every single any content that we put up it's bots offline will that happen and when can't comment about that right now. <laughs> totally fair totally so fair. We're, so right now I'm I'm literally so we're still I'm still neck deep pretty much in phase yep. one as well as as doing just technical director work for for the rest of the game and right. everything else like that so uh, there's a lot of really, really good stuff coming down yeah. the pipe. Uh, can't talk about all of it yet, yeah. but but it's definitely coming, and, and we're working really hard here. The whole team's really pushing hard here, so yeah. it's really exciting stuff. Yeah. But but yeah, I can't give too many details just yet. That's fair. Plus, we're an online game, so let's just let's do the online thing first, right? Yep. Let's get that going. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, and of course, like when do bots come? I don't know if we can elaborate on phase one of that a little bit, or is that still something that we're that's another one of those things. Still coming down the pipe. We're still kind of working out yeah. the details, but it it's soon. Yeah. Like we're we're crunching hard here. Yeah. Getting it out. So. Yeah. And to be fair, I played them in office, and they're amazing. Like. Oh yeah. The we, first time I actually played them, before it was spoiled that I was playing with bots, I really had no idea. I was looking around, and I was like, "Yeah, this guy's pretty good. Like, I think I know everyone that's in this game. I'm not ex even sure who this yeah. this one in particular player is. It's a bot." <coughs> Yeah, it was actually so kudos. Uh, yeah, it was actually uh, our producer's idea, Kevin Cloud, to say, hey, you know, have the bots have the same names of all of all the players and like mix and match them together, and said, see if anyone can tell the difference. So I set that up, you know, yeah. so their names were the same as everyone else's, and it was yeah. like nobody could tell. That's so, awesome. So that's that's always a good the good test there. Yeah. If you can't tell the difference, then then we're doing our job, and you're gonna have fun because they're yeah. not the fact that their AI aren't gonna get in the way of your experience. You're just gonna have a really good time. Definitely. And then um, someone was asking, will the bots be like Quake 3 and have uh, pointless chat conversations? No. <laughs> no more back chat of smack no. talk of bots all the time? No, no, because those get, those get pretty old pretty quick. I they mean, really they might be fun at the very first time, but yeah. it also kind of calls out the fact that they're bots. I, I, I think for <laughs> most people, myself included, I yeah. just want to have a good time. And, yeah. and whether it's training with them or just beating up on them or just, you know, 
pushing myself and, and my skill and everything else like yeah. that. I just want to have a good time. I don't yeah. really need to hit, get the, the chat, chat yeah. bot stuff. So. I think, I think especially in, in this game in particular where there's so much going on with just keeping track of where your team is and what you're supposed to be doing and, and where everyone else is and what your stack is that it's like, there's not really a lot of chat in game right now. There's not a ton no. of like back and forth. I mean, every now and then a funny thing will happen and somebody might stop and say like, yeah. you know, LOL or nice shot or something. But really it's like that Quake 3 thing was like pretty overwhelming and I think would not have a place in this game, rightfully so, because it's like, yeah. unless we're doing like chat binds, it's like, no one, we don't play that game anymore. Yeah. Now we're just focusing on playing the game and not all the smack talk. We can do that on comms now, right? Yep. Whereas maybe in 1999 and so on and so forth, it was... Uh, TeamSpeak and Discord and all that stuff was not really where it is now. Yep. We can just we can t we can we can smack talk absolutely. live and in person now, which yep. is way more fun. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. For thank you for dropping this bot bomb on the world. It's coming soon, phase one. We're super pumped, and uh, I think we're gonna switch cast one more time here, and we're gonna take some questions. So, uh, stick around for a sec. Adam Pyle, lead designer of Quake Champions. You might remember him from about 10 minutes ago. And uh, Joshua Well, Tokyo Punch Out, your community manager. Yeah. One of one of two. Andre is not with us today, but uh, we love him. So, you enjoying the stream so far? Uh, it seems like everybody's like really into the gore and the bots. Yeah. Um, we're excited to have everybody on. So, uh, I, I like the format. The format is good. Honestly, like, it's funny because yesterday when I put out the social thing and we're shooting from the hip, Adam sent me a schedule last night, and I was like, holy shit. Like, this is amazing. Like, we're doing all this tomorrow? I was like, Yeah, okay. I wrote it up. I finished it last night, like, 11, 30 <laughs> or something and sent it out. So, yeah, we, we've been really busy this week. Um, we've been really busy the past couple months, yeah. uh, especially. Um, but normally we try to plan these out a little bit more, but we kind of... You know, so it's kind of been ink fun this one in, like this. and so yeah. it's kind of crazy that we decided to get everybody involved. But I, <laughs> I've been really adamant about doing this, about getting more people in, yeah. um, and I hope you all appreciate it because we have a lot of great talent on the team. Oh yeah, and I think it's wonderful to get some exposure out there, let you guys see the people that are in there. Because, you know, a lot of these are people who have been with ID for a long time. Yeah, uh, a lot of people that have been in the community for a long time. Yeah, you know, I, I thought it was great that you know John JD got a touch on you know. Where he came from with yeah. with Quake One, his work in you know yeah. the the RTCW scene and yeah. and uh, he did amazing work in Quake Wars. Like yeah. I've never seen better boss than Quake Wars. Where which is like the hardest game to do him well in, right? Yeah, no, and you start so a match and then you see a bot run over and jump into a vehicle like a helicopter and fly <laughs> off with it, and you're like <laughs> half the players didn't know how to fly that thing. Yeah, and um, <laughs> the, you know that they do the all the objectives and they could strafe jump. It was the first time I saw a bot that was strafe jumping. It's amazing. Uh, and it's so Sometimes impressive. Sometimes I so wish I could turn my bot on and be better at strafe jumping every now and then. I'm like, is that, yeah. a, circle? Is that a circle strafe jump by a bot? I'm like, come on. That, that is that is a cool thing to do. I know some people yeah. do that in the Quake 3 community, the yeah. modding community, like where they program bots to do like strafe and circle jumps so that you could like learn from them. That's awesome. Yeah, like, use like a ghost. That's super cool. Very cool. So yeah, it's been an awesome stream. We've had... A ton of staff, and again, a lot of times why we don't necessarily have all these people on is because everyone's like nose we're down, <laughs> busting their ass, trying to get all of these things into the game, right? Yeah, it's it's, it's hard. Not like we're hiding people. It's like they're just so busy working that even doing this, we're like, okay, we're gonna do this for an hour. It's hard to break away. Yeah, you know, we we have a lot of uh, you know, lot to do. Yeah, a lot of work. Um, 
it's hard to pull a whole bunch of people and get involved, but I'm, I'm glad they did it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's worth the time. Definitely. Um, you know, we, we just lost a month of work from JD because he <laughs> lost an hour because he works like a, a madman. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. So I think uh, we have like four or five minutes okay. to take to questions. Do questions? Yeah. Okay. So four questions. Our stream maestro, Brandon, is getting it together right now. Mm -hmm. Smooth as butter, easy transition, question to question. They're coming, coming anytime. So we can't see the chat. Yeah. So you guys know. But hey, Here we, we got go. some questions. Hey. So Tribolt skin win. Oh my gosh, Tribolt. Um, so uh, I, I, don't, I don't know when the skin's coming. Yeah. Um, one thing I'll say is that we actually, like what you saw in PTS was still in development. Yeah. Um, like we were reskinning it, we were working with different things, trying different stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm glad there's some excitement or interest in it. Yeah. Um, it'll be coming pretty soon. I know that we've been finishing up that work. Yeah. But one thing that uh, we always kind of planned or wanted to do with it was that we are going to launch it with some of our tribal changes. Yes. So I didn't get to talk about that, and oh, we don't have much time. But the tribal, uh, I'll go ahead and say it. Do so it. we've we nailed down like a couple months ago what we wanted to do with the tribal, And it wasn't what we had told people previously. We, um, One of our programmers, Jason, he had an idea, tried something different, we loved it. Yeah. And it was a simple thing. This so is really exciting, actually. Rather it's than cool. uh, the bolts exploding yeah. after they make contact. So yeah. normally there was a timer, like they make contact, and then there's a certain amount of time before they explode. Right. Now the timer starts when you fire. So good. So what it means is that there's, yeah. How does there's, that a, change exactly? there's a finite distance that the gun can actually shoot. Right. But what happens is they, they then explode in air. Right. So there's a couple things that happen here. Uh, if you're like on the low ground, you well, can let's, like... Let's talk about Blood Covenant yeah. when you're outside by heavy armor, right? Yeah, that's the easiest the example to visualize for most people. Yeah. If you're down by heavy armor and then you have an attacker or an opponent up on the bridge. Right. Common scenario. We've yeah. all been there. Oh, yeah. No, this, this is this is the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so now if you have a tribal, you you can... And this is the, about the right distance, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, you can, when you're down that lower area, you know, fire up towards the bridge, and when the bolts come over the ledge of the bridge, they explode in the air, which means they can now hit an opponent on the bridge. So good. Whereas before, you they would have just sailed over and, and done nothing. So it's nothing. like three like, remote detonating rockets, if timed and, and spaced. Mini rockets. Mini rockets, if yeah. timed and spaced properly, which, like yeah. you said, is about that distance. So it instantly has um, a place to use the weapon that, you would never want to like use the rock launcher. It's, it is now a, a weapon with a purpose. That's awesome. And so there's a lot of times where I'm like, why would you want a rock launcher when you have a tribal? Yeah. Um, and we'll make sure that we don't go overboard with that because it is really powerful. Right now. Yeah. But it feels great when you get the right distance from an enemy. Yeah. And you're trying to like time explosions around him, and he just kind of blows up in a blender. It's amazing. We should move on. But yeah. that's coming, and we'll probably try to get the you know new tribal out around that time, or, or uh, you know so people can kind of join them together. Yeah. It's really exciting though. Like that gun is now insane and has. It's like does the Holy Trinity have to get a plus one? We we we'll see. Might be a Holy Quadrantry. I'm bad with it would how fit to do with that. Quake, so. yeah, yeah, there you go. There's um, a big blue question right there. Oh, there it is. What is up with the shirts? Did you guys buy those together? I wish you know. Maybe we should try to do like more. No, uh, we're not that savvy <laughs> to buy shirts together. No. The fact that we're both wearing shirts and we're here, it's like two wins today already. So like. Yeah, yeah, no, um, I guess the short answer is uh, you always have mad game oh, thanks. with your shirts, that. and everybody loves them, yeah. and I have to step it up. Dude, um, I mean, it's funny because I saw him on uh, a video call that we had the other day, and I was like, is that like a Cthulhu-themed button-up shirt? I was like, where the hell do I get that? I think it's I mean, amazing. It's definitely Octopus Nauticus, but... Uh, I bought it for low price, so like I have to give a shout out because what happens is anytime I go out shopping, yeah. not necessarily for clothes, just like anywhere, I, my family and my wife are always out on like the lookout <laughs> for anything that has like octopuses or a Lovecraftian theme. And so we were out at <laughs> a, a out at a local mall, and, and she spotted it, and she was like, "Adam, do you want this? You got to wear this shirt. You want this shirt?" And I'm like, "I love that shirt." So um, yeah, I picked it up. And, I'm glad people like it. That's awesome. I'm representing uh, Abstract Cows or Rorschach or whatever it, it's interpreted to you, and we've got full-on uh, octopus nautical, and it is amazing. Yeah, right I mean, I'm going to try to wear Lovecraft every day if I can. Dude, that, I like that. I need to get more, though. Yeah. yeah. It's tough. It's tough to find. Um, That's shirts. That's the important <laughs> stuff. And now we're out of time. Shirts. <laughs> now we're going to keep going. A couple more? Okay. Anti-cheat. Is it in the game? How that work? Yeah. yeah. Um... So I, I don't know what all we, 
so anti-cheat is a weird thing where you never want to talk too much about it, yeah. but I still will a little bit. Um, we've had an anti-cheat in since last summer, mm -hmm. um, but like one thing we've done during early access period is we're gaining you know player data yeah. over the course of all those months. So we're now almost coming up to a, a year where we've collected data on players so that we can learn the behavior yeah. to help identify who is cheating and who's not. Right. Um, and we're just now starting to, like, uh, I guess turn those knobs where we start to like pick on the cheaters and and start to ban them. Yeah, um, because we needed that data. You can't just come into a game and, and say, "Hey, X service, we're going to hire you to to catch anti cheaters," and they're going to be able to do it without knowing all of the data of what the trends are, what the higher percentages of players are, how that all that stuff works. Yeah, yeah. So the answer is yes. Yeah, there's anti cheat, <laughs> um, and then we'll just kind of start to leverage that in the future yeah. and and make use of it. Um, but that was like a really necessary period. Right. And we had the luxury of early access to get that. We and did. That's great. And people always ask us, like, oh, is X banned or is Y banned? We can't ever talk about who is or isn't banned. And we don't like doing any of that witch hunt or name call out stuff. But just know that players are banned and will continue to be banned. And we're always monitoring and we're always looking. And we appreciate you sending us, uh, you know, stuff that's not too witch huntery. But yeah, again, we are very concerned and we are very on it. Do not worry. Sure. Um, are you going to buff the light champions? Um. Are going to buff the light champions? So uh, you kind of talked about that a little bit already. In the we sense we you're, did, and I can't. Yeah. I don't know if I could answer any further than that because, okay. um, I, I, I know that they're really squishy right now. Yeah, we want them to be squishy. Yeah, but we also want them to be a little bit better than they are. Right. But I don't know if buff is the right word because we don't know what the stacks are going to look like for everybody. Right. And they could be very similar to the way they are now, but we want to keep trying things. So, um, but very specifically, like with Anarchy because he's the weakest of the bunch. Yeah. I would call out that he's probably going to get equalized at least with the other lights, if nothing else. Right. Um, we have a question there. It's like, hey, is Anarchy going to get his groove back? Um, referring to his speed. Yeah. Hashtag, uh, free, hashtag free Anarchy. Free anarchy. <laughs> um, so there's definitely going to, like, overall the movement's going to be pretty close to what we have now for yeah. all of the champions. Yeah. Anarchy will get improvements mm -hmm. where I'm going to reduce the circle strafe friction that he has right now, it yeah. doesn't mean we're going to get rid of the um, changes we had in April. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be somewhere between um, where he's been in the past and where he is now. Yeah. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the show, we now like have all the tools to balance him the right way. Yeah. So I'm really happy with where he is. Not that he's done, but I'm really happy with where we are and where we can take him. Cool. He'll get a little bit better. He'll get a little bit health healthier. Mm -hmm. um, I would say he's going to get his groove back. Yeah. Um, he's still going to have less circle strafe um, ability than the other characters because he's just way too nimble and he can't break away from a fight so fast that you can never hit him. Right, so, and that was kind of the problem before the, the speed unification started, right? Was yeah. he would just damage you a bit and bounce and you, you have no chance of catching him. Yeah, I still like the idea of him building up speed over time yeah, rather than course. just circle strafing and boop, he's out of there. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, we don't want people to be uh, leaving fights as easily as he was. Okay. Yeah. I got a last question wrap up. I'm going to split into two questions Why? just to be cheeky, just just for fun. Um, there was a question of are we going to nerf totem spam? And specifically, I thought we had kind of talked yesterday about the idea of the totem hitbox. I think that's maybe the better way to address it. Oh, there's so much to talk about with Glina and her totems. Let's just give the very truncated version. No, of the I want to give the real meat. <laughs> um, fine, I'll give here two part real meat. quick. Okay. So I know that right now it's like hard to destroy the totem sometimes. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm experiencing it too, where I throw a rocket or a rail at it, and I'm like, I hit that thing, it didn't blow up. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just going to call that probably a bug yeah. that we'll have to fix going forward, and we will. Right. Um, the real neat thing that I wanted just to throw out is okay. that she's getting changes. Yeah. And we've talked about this a little bit before, like changing her to more of a team player. Nice. And so um, we are coming very close to that where. Um, her totems are now going to be any teammate can heal from it once, mm -hmm. rather than it be a one and done. So like, uh, rather than the totem being there and then someone heal off it and it goes that's, inactive. That's really nice. And then you have to wait for the cooldown to stop. To yeah. Now it's going to go inactive for you. Oh, that's tight. And it'll still be active for the other teammates. They'll still see it as active. So it's teammate specific now. Yeah, so everyone just, can heal off it. Now, once awesome. we have that, we have that now in our testing, yeah. I'm going to have to rebalance. Like, so we don't know, I can't say how much like it's going to heal for or how much damage they're going to do. Like, we're going to rebalance all of that. Yeah. But the idea is now she has fewer totems. Yeah. She has three. Okay. Everybody can heal off of them yeah. on her team. And uh, the other key thing is that because it's easier to get to the max totem yeah. now, yeah. Uh, there's a bonus when you have all three totems out. Oh, damn. And we always have that. Because the thing that where it looked like it was on fire? 
Yeah, so now the flaming thing makes more sense. Like, we always had something where you Lights. got to five and you had a bonus, but five was so hard to get to. Yeah. Because they get destroyed all the time. And I felt like if you had five out, it's like the other team is not doing their job. Yeah, so or now, just them really well. when you have three out, they'll do over max healing. So it's kind of like getting a mega. <laughs> Um, again, like it may not be like a mega as far as terms of how many HP. Yeah. But like if someone's full or near full yeah. and they heal off it, they'll go above their max and they'll decay down. That's beautiful. So it should be more useful to teammates. Man, that is a lot of good meat for That Galena. was a lot of, yeah. That's Where did good, that come though. from? Okay. Yeah, that was a good question. Another, the, the last question, which we won't even answer, is uh, Jib or Gib. Thank you very much, everybody, for being <laughs> here today. <laughs> Thanks uh, for enjoying the stream. It's been a super fun stream, and we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Okay. See you in the arena. See ya. Later.